Right, but if uh, websites mention your particular product or service or your company, then um, do the research for websites that mention you by name or mention a product or service that you offer. Uh, then contact the webmasters of those particular uh, websites and just simply say, well, you've mentioned the product, you've mentioned the company maybe, uh, is there any chance of uh, a link back to a, your particular website? Um, in the majority of the cases, they'll probably ignore you or say no, but don't ask, don't get. It's worth a try. Right, photographs. Um, you can submit photographs to a large number of uh, websites that share photos. Flickr is the uh, most well-known one. Uh, so there's lots and lots of these. And um, again, uh, done right, you can uh, basically submit photos and um, get links back to your website. Just another way of acquiring links. Right, asking for links, this is probably the easiest way of getting links. If you've got customers who are happy, um, then basically just talk to them and say, well, you know, if you like the service, you like the product, you like the company, um, any chance of a, a click on our um, like uh, button on Facebook or um, um, a comment on the blog, favorable comment, um, clicking on the Google Plus one. I mean, don't be afraid to ask people to, um, you know, basically help your website along. Download tutorials, um, fact sheets, reports. Um, basically, try and um, invent valuable data that's nicely uh, formatted. And once you've made these available as downloads, maybe a fact sheet or something like that, then what you can do is you can say, you know, download it for free by all means. And if you like it, you know, maybe consider a backlink or failing that, um, a, a click on the, uh, the Facebook buttons or the Google Plus buttons, etc. Uh, but again, uh, make sure you ask rather than demand. So if you try and swap something in return for a link or you know, in return for a, a Google Plus recommendation or something like that, you might find in some cases you're breaking the terms and conditions of the, you know, the relevant schemes there. So it's always much better to ask than demand. And uh, if people enjoy the, um, the quality of the content, more than likely they will link to you. You can make it easy for your visitors to add a link back to your website. So um, if you've got um, a straightforward website, you can provide code for um, people linking back to you. Um, if you've got um, a Facebook page or um, YouTube videos or what have you, again, you can provide relevant codes so people can link back to you or link back to your websites. Question and answer websites. Again, there's lots of these that are very popular. Um, you can ask questions on other people's um, question and answer websites. And if you keep an eye on these, you can also um, get to start answering questions. And again, if you answer a question that's um, you know, particularly relevant to your particular um, product or service, in that case, it'd be quite legitimate to you know, give a partial answer and then say, for more information, click here, you know, more details on our website. So this is quite a nice idea, again, of getting uh, more links to your websites again. Check out whether they're follow or no follow. There'll be a mixture in some cases. Um, so things like Google and Yahoo groups, you know, that's that's the sort of thing you should look for. Um, basically, question answer type websites. You can be, become an expert um, relatively easy for things like local newspapers and radio and TV stations. I mean, by and large, if you put yourself forward as an expert, it stops them having to search for an expert. So if you've got a, a, a particular expertise that you can share with the, um, the local media, um, basically put yourself forward and say, we know about this, we have expertise on this. Um, let them know you're available for interviews and comments. And um, quite often you might find that they uh, in turn will list you uh, or list a, a link to your website on, on their own website. So again, it's just a way of spreading the word really. Um, local industry associations and groups, um, as I sort of mentioned earlier on, these are a great way of getting links to your websites, um, either local groups, national groups or um, association groups, uh, sometimes even international associations, um, well worth joining, especially if they provide a link back to your website. By exploiting 404 areas on competitor websites, if you've got um, a competitive website and uh, you, you use some of the site analysis tools and you find there are 404 areas which basically is the uh, the jargon for saying a page is missing it's been deleted or renamed or something like that but basically if you've got um, if you've got 404 errors 
then um, you might find that if people are linking to those uh, broken links from a, a third party website, if you go back to that third party website and say, well, the link that you did have to this other website is broken, would you consider linking to ours instead? Bit of a long shot, but it's another way of possibly getting links, an easy way, because um, nobody likes broken links. So if you go to someone and say, you know, you've got a website, you weren't linking to these people over here, that link, that page, for some reason, no longer exists. However, if you use this link, it's got the same sort of information that uh, you were linking to. Basically, you just solved their problem and pointed out the fact they've got some broken links. So it's a fair chance they might um, um, might take the advice and uh, link to you instead. Right, offering educational discounts. As I mentioned earlier, getting uh, links on educational uh, websites, .edu websites, uh, is actually quite difficult. So what you can do is consider offering, um, say, uh, discounts to staff or to students, and um, possibly you might get a linking on the websites. And this cat, this uh, this sort of linking from educational sites carries a lot of weight with the search engines. Uh, linking from top research or top uh, reference sites. Um, if you go into Google and do search of something like um, top reference sites followed by your particular product, service, or whatever, or top sites for researching, etc then you'll find there's loads and loads of these sort of sites, top 10 sites, top reference sites, etc. Et Again, if you go and contact them directly, you might well find they'll uh, consider putting a, a link into um, your particular website if it's relevant to that particular page. Right, guest blogging. Um, once you start blogging, uh, at first people kind of enjoy it, it's something new, it's different, but pretty soon it's a chore, it's something you have to churn out once a week or once a month or how often you, uh, you update your blog. So the idea of guest, guest blogging is that uh, you can offer to write blogs for other people. So if someone else has got a blog and it's uh, related to your particular product or service, you can say, well, I've got some content. Do you want to publish my material? On? Um, and of course, you can have a link back to your website. Um, so it's just another way of getting links. And you'll find that um, quite often people are more than happy to have a guest blogger, providing it's not obviously directly competitive to them. Sponsoring an educational event. Um, again, this is another way possibly of getting a listing on an educational website, a .edu website. So if you sponsor maybe a sports day or an, um, something like um, an arts competition, you might well find that in return for that and providing the sponsorship, they will give you a link to your particular web page or websites. In the same, same sort of way, if your uh, company is a regular donator to charities, you can always ask the charity whether they consider linking back to your websites because again, um, Google will look favourably on this sort of link from uh, well-established uh, charity websites, especially if they've got a high PR. Right, podcast directories. Um, consider creating podcasts and then once these are created, you can submit them to podcast directories the same way you'd submit, um, say, videos to YouTube or presentations to presentation sharing sites. Um, a podcast is basically just um, a soundcast. It's something you record um, save that and upload it. Um, again, there's, there's loads of different ones here, so there's things like Podfeed, um, uh, Podcast Directory, um, the Pod Lounge. Um, again, if you do a search of these, you'll find there might be ones more applicable to your uh, particular country or area. Um, so just do the research, find something that's useful for you, to you, and if you find this works, um, start podcasting. Right, Green Directories. Um, if you do an audit on within your company and then implement the recommendations so you get uh, sort of green audit approval, you'll then find there are lots of um, new directories that are springing up which are basically green, um, environmentally friendly uh, directories. And these are becoming increasingly popular with audiences. So it kind of stamps your um, green credentials, if you like, um, on the web. And uh, in a lot of cases, only um, companies that have been properly environmentally audited will be um, eligible for these sort of directories. So again, it's a nice way of uh, possibly entering a niche market or uh, you know, getting more, more links to your websites.